Welcome back for another episode of Fonzie After Five, my ode to late night 90s call in radio with a holiday twist. Tonight, I am so happy to be joined by my friend, Bernard Holcomb. Welcome, Bernard. Tonight, I have with me Bernard Holcomb. Welcome, Bernard. How are you doing tonight and where are you? I am doing very well. I am in the Bronx, the Boogie Down, New York, in my <laughs> huge apartment. The apartments in the Bronx are huge, everybody. <laughs> And I see you've got your tree behind you. Is that, are you in your room with your own tree? So I do have my own tree in my room because it's just that big and that's how much I love Christmas. But <laughs> I am in the living room, which I painted like two years ago, green. It used to be a yellow color, but now it's very Christmassy in here and very comfortable. It looks awesome. So your tree that you've got there and in your room, are those ornaments that you brought with you from like when you were younger or are those all things you bought new? Oh God, could you imagine? I wish that I could have saved some ornaments from when I was younger, but number one, they were all glass, right? That that thin glass and so they broke very easily. Um, and also like for whatever reason with us moving and me going to college and like no one has anything from when I was a kid. Um, so these are all things, this is a new tradition. These are things that uh, I bought for myself when I moved here into this apartment. And when you were little, where did you spend your Christmases? in Detroit uh, with my family and it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I actually, my parents thought something was wrong with me because I was mesmerized by the Christmas tree. Like I could sit for hours and stare at the Christmas tree. Um, and I still do the same thing here in my own apartment. I'll just stare at these lights. And there's there's just something about the lights that, and the, and the shiny like things on the tree that really mesmerize me that I love about the season, love about Christmas. So if you think back to the trees when you were little, when you first were mesmerized, can you describe them? Like what kind of lights did you have? Or do you have any ornaments that you remember? Like, oh, I really liked that one. Or what did you, did you put anything on top of the tree? What did your childhood tree look like? So <laughs> I feel like such a kid, like, Thinking about it um, takes me back to that place and just takes me back to that place of sheer joy and excitement. Um, so we always had multicolored lights and they were always the, the little lights. My mom, when she was growing up, she said they always had those big like lights from the 60s and 70s that didn't blink or do anything and probably would burn down your tree. But we had... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We had multicolored lights and a lot of times they would blink. Um, and the thing I remember the most is the star that we would put on the top. It was so cheesy, it was plastic, but it had like um, this mini gold garland around several um, of the lights that would stick in. And I can't remember, was it multicolored? I think it was white, I think it was all white lights and it would blink, it would flash on and off. And we had that my entire childhood, like it wasn't Christmas unless I saw that star on top. Oh, did you did you help decorate the tree or was that, you know, someone else's job or, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I had to have a hand in it. Like I am a Christmas freak. And when I was a kid, it was even were worse. Were you a real tree family? No, we were a fake tree family. Um, I didn't do my first real tree until I was, maybe 18, I think. Um, and that was a whole nother story because it just, I love the smell of it. However, it's a hassle. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what did you that ask? Turns out. <laughs> <laughs> was it the skirt? What did you ask? I forgot. Yeah, did you have, did you put anything around the bottom of the tree? Like, was there like a skirt around the bottom or anything? Yeah, so we had a Christmas uh, tree skirt. It was um, red and white. And it was made of a very like cheap material, but I just, I just loved it. It had to be there. Yeah. And where in your house would you put the tree up? So the tree was always in the living room um, in front of one of the windows. We had like this bungalow house and the living room and dining room were connected. Um, so it would be on the living room side in front of the window. And then we would always decorate the other window too. Oh, what would you put in the window? Some, um, some of those big, huge lights that were probably burnt out. <laughs> And it's funny how my taste has changed 
because now all my Christmas lights, um, except for one thing in the house are all like non-flashing white lights, like in all my windows, on the tree. It's very classy, very clean. Yeah, well, it looks absolutely beautiful. I love it. Well, you had two brothers, right? Were they equally as into Christmas as you were? Absolutely not. <laughs> 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 like, let me tell you, I am the only one still to this day that is like a Christmas fanatic. I start decorating people usually on November 1st. And if I okay. could before November 1st, I would. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, let me hold off until at least November 1st. Like if there, if there wasn't Halloween in the way, you could just like go right to it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> were you a, a Santa family did you did you have Santa at your house we did I think until I was it was very early like when I was five and then my, I think it was my father that was like okay I'm the one that's buying these gifts and working hard to bring these things into the house so you're not gonna believe in Santa you're gonna know that daddy <laughs> <laughs> gifts and gave them to you and I always wanted a it's tied to Christmas. I always wanted a fireplace in our house, but we didn't have one. So I was always stumped like, okay, how is Santa getting in? Does he have an extra key? Like, how is he getting in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I love that. Did you ask for presents or was it kind of like whatever your parents got, that was what you got or how did that work? So I always, they always encouraged us to write out a list. And each time I would hand them a list, they would look it over and say, oof, oof, we don't know. Oh, we don't know if we're going to be able to get it. Um, but then my brothers and I would band together. And it was usually a video game system that was like the hottest thing that year and was pretty much impossible to get. Um, but we always got it. So every Christmas morning, I would wake up and be like so surprised. And side note we always opened our gifts around 2 or 3 a.m like we could not wait until the sun came up we would <laughs> literally go to sleep at midnight with nothing under the tree wake up at two somehow and there would be all these presents and i would go to my parents room and knock on the door and say hey can we open our gifts now weirdest thing but that's what we always did and then we would play until 6 a.m and then fall asleep until like 11 and then <laughs> I, that's so funny that your parents were just like they just gave in they were like eh, it's happening at two in the morning whatever like that's i love that I they feel bad. right i feel bad because i feel like i robbed them like me as a parent i'm gonna want to watch my kids open these gifts and i'm not getting up at 3 a.m to watch them open gifts so but they were cool with it oh do you have any Christmas memories of getting, I mean, I know you said you got some gaming systems that you wanted that were like the hottest thing. Do you have any other memories of presents that were awesome? Like things that you were like, oh my gosh, the year I got the front end loader or like Oh, I don't have any presents that really stick out to me. One thing that sticks out to me is my father does contracting work. And so one year, out of nowhere, he built a bench for me and my brothers, like for us to um, play video games on. So I don't know if he did it like that night in two hours. It was pretty nice. But he created this thing and he like wrote a note on it and like, this is for my boys. And it was like, oh, I still I still really connect to that. Memory. If you think back to like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, did you have any family traditions? Like, did you go to church? Did you I mean, what were what did that kind of look like so yeah when i was younger we didn't have midnight mass but we would have a christmas eve service and um we were able to open up one gift when we came back home before the, the next morning however my favorite time i love church but my favorite times would be when my family would get together like my dad is one of 10 kids my mom is one of eight and so I had lots of aunts uncles and cousins and either side would get together on christmas eve and we would do a secret santa exchange and everyone would be talking and one of my aunts had a gift for finding the biggest christmas trees imaginable like like i'm pretty a big guy but i couldn't like put my arms around it now um and those 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 are the times that i really cherish but so one thing i do remember as far as food is concerned is my grandmother on my mom's side 
I don't know. I cannot find a recipe. I've never tasted something similar to what she would make, but she would make me a yellow cake with this dark chocolate frosting. And it was so moist. That I just, oh God, I wish I could find someone to either give me the recipe or make that cake for me. But she always did that for me, like around Christmas. Like looking time. back on the traditions and memories you have as a kid, is there anything that like when you have your own family that, that you want to bring with or anything that you're like, we never did this and I really want to do this with my own family? Like anything new that you have in your mind that you want to start? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, I always wanted a fireplace and I always wanted a piano when I was a kid. And I do have a piano here in the Bronx in my apartment. Um, not that I'll be here when I have a family, but when I do have a family and I have my own place, we're definitely sitting down to the piano and having like Christmas time, um, what are the things called? Carols. And I'll be playing. I've been learning how to play throughout this whole pandemic by ear. Um, I can also read music, but we're definitely going to sit down and like, I'm probably going to be the house where everyone comes because I'm Mr. Christmas, right? So <laughs> <laughs> my friends, their kids, you know, all my family, I want them to come over and like spend Christmas Eve with me. The rich musical heritage and history of Detroit and all the acts that have come, you know, Motown, outside of that, there have been so many others, but Detroit just as a city has a very rich history when you think about the automotive industry. And I just recognize, or just was, um, I found out a friend told me because he works for Detroit Public Schools, that Detroit Public Schools was really like the um, blueprint for the country. And I guess 1854, they started their public school system. And so every other school system after that really modeled themselves after Detroit. And I thought that that was so cool. Are you staying in the Bronx, staying in New York for Christmas? Yeah. Yeah, will this be the first year that you're in that apartment for Christmas or have you been there before? I've been here before. Um, I think I was here in 2015. I was here in 2017 and I'll be here in 2020. So when you were younger, when you were living in Detroit, were there any places you would go in Detroit to see Christmassy type things? Like did you, was the downtown area, did they, was it done up or like, would you go, go look at stuff, you know, go look at lights or anything? Oh, there is a neighborhood. I can't remember the name of the whole neighborhood, but there's a street in Detroit. If anyone is watching this, they know. There's a street called Sorrento. And for whatever reason, every house would be decked out to the max with like huge electricity bills, I'm assuming, because there were lights everywhere in every window, on the grass, on the roof, like everywhere. So we would always drive through that neighborhood very slowly and check out the lights. Oh, that's fun. Do you, is there anything that you do it. I mean, I know this year's a little different, but any places that you like to go in New York to see the Christmas decorations or do you do, you do the Rockefeller Center thing? Like what, what do you like to do? You know what? I think, was it last year was my first time? No, maybe it was 2018, my first time going to Rockefeller Center um, because of Home Alone 2. I was like, I gotta go, right? I gotta go like see what this is all about. <laughs> Otherwise, the one place that I always usually go is Macy's because they have the Believe sign um up there and i just i love it but there are also some places along fifth avenue maybe in the 40s 30s 40s um that have there's one place that always has these huge christmas bulbs and like candy canes that i usually stop by so i know we both were in chicago during the holidays for at least two years did you ever ride the christmas l no, I saw someone post a picture of it the other day and I was super jealous because I was like, I never got a chance to ride the Christmas L. Shoot, Bernard, <laughs> you gotta, you'll have to make it happen some year. You gotta go back and do it. Did you ride it? Did you catch it? One time, one time I got to ride it, yeah. And I remember like the seats have Christmas material on them. They put like Christmas material and there were people handing out little mini candy canes. Was there a schedule like, or were you just super lucky? Well, there, there technically is a schedule. Like they'll tell you when it's supposed to come through, but it was just pure chance that I was there one night. I think it was like coming home from Lyric or something. I don't know. It was just pure chance that it, I was there when the holiday all came through. And it was, it was pretty amazing. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I mean, Detroit has the potential at least for snowy Christmases or at least cold winters for sure. Did you play outside in the snow as a kid? Was that something you and your brothers did? Absolutely. We always made these huge snowmen. Uh, we would have snow fights. One year, it wasn't Christmas. It was like immediately after Christmas. A cousin of mine 
actually made an igloo in our backyard because it snowed like 20 inches. And so we dug out, we dug into the snow and like there was a root, it was, it was the greatest. Was did the you greatest. ever go ice skating as a kid? I did not. I think I went ice skating maybe when I was in college. I was like 19 or 20 and it was terrible. My feet hurt so badly. <laughs> it's the worst, right? It's the worst. It's the worst. Like, like your just, ankles? Oh, they're like this. Like your feet. You're like <laughs> me trying to support myself on these blades, like these, like, no. That's what I love about what you put out on social media because it's always so encouraging and so meaningful. Where does that like where do you think that spirit of positivity and encouragement comes from in you? Oh um, I think partially it comes from my um being raised by two like really Christian parents, being in church. However, <clears throat> I would say even a bigger part of it came from being bullied as a kid and having to find my way and having to make my way and um, having to really encourage myself. And so the positive things that I started putting out on a regular, regular basis came from me really encouraging myself and wanting to be able to look back and have a record of either what I was going through or something to look at when I was feeling down. Um, and so now it's just grown into something that I share with everybody and that's really become super a positive influence in my own life. Do you have do you have nieces and nephews that that you're able to, you know, be an uncle to? Absolutely. I have two nieces. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm sure that they think of you. Oh man, they must just adore you. And I make sure to pour into them. I make sure I have a goddaughter as well. I make sure to pour into her and tell her how special she is and how much I love her and how much I'm there for her if she ever needs to talk about anything. Like that's that's really important to me. Yeah. They're never going to forget that. They're, you're going to have that special bond for, for a long time. Yeah. Will, will you be sending them any Christmas presents? Absolutely. Um, Amazon is my friend. <laughs> but you know, even more than Amazon, I think this year I'm going to invest more in Etsy because the big corporations have so much, right? But because of the pandemic, the smaller businesses and creators are really struggling. So I think I'm going to invest more in that. Do you think it's fun to shop for little girls? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love finding the little things and finding things. I struggle sometimes with gift giving, especially if I don't know someone, because I really want it to be well thought out. I really want it to be something that's like Uncle Bernard thought of you and like you had to have this thing. Do you have a favorite Christmas hymn that you remember singing in church? Mm. Oh, come all ye faith. Oh, that when, when I would hear we used to do a Christmas pageant at my church and they would turn off the lights and they would light candles and we would sing them and it would start with music but then it would go to this acapella section and just hearing the joy and the adoration and the worship come out of people's voices I still like I can feel it in my chest um the feeling that I had when I would hear my that. favorite Christmas memory uh was 1989 I remember and uh, I was the first one to get up. We had like a cousin and her family staying with us, like her three kids. And I went to sleep and there were no presents. Um, and then I woke up at 3 a.m. and it was like, I couldn't hardly get into the space because there were so many presents. And that actually was the first year that I got a keyboard. And I think that's like when we were talking earlier about like the gift. Um, <clears throat> but the thing that I love the most about Christmas and about the holidays is togetherness and um, family being together, whether someone's traveling in from out of town. And so that makes this year even harder because a lot of people aren't able to gather and be together. But I'm so grateful for technology, which allows us to be on Zoom. And it's not the same, but I, I really love the idea of getting together with friends and family. And it's the time of year where I'm reaching out to people and letting them know I'm grateful that they're in my life. Um, also just thinking about the past year and thinking about the year ahead, you know? Um, yeah, but the, the main thing that I love about this time of year is the togetherness and the love. I mean, aside from all the decorations and everything, um, I know you mentioned that you just love the togetherness but how would you kind of sum up like what Christmas means to you? Hmm. Christmas means love. Christmas means warmth. 
Christmas to me is about giving. Um, as I've grown older, you know, when I was a kid, it was all about the gifts and what I could get. But now it's really about how much I can give. And it may not even be monetarily. It may not be a gift. It may be creating a space for someone to talk to me about something, or it may just be giving a kind word to a stranger or looking at someone in the eye on the street and just acknowledging their presence. Um, but this time of year really feels like love um, from me to the world. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And do you think, do you think that there's anybody particular in your life who you like, you're thinking about this year that you feel like needs a little extra or you don't have to say who they are, but like, you know, just, I don't know, anybody that you're thinking you, you're going to make a point of reaching out to or anything? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's actually a list because of, you know, the pandemic and everything that we've been through this year. And <clears throat> I feel incredibly blessed um, because I haven't been super affected by it uh, financially and otherwise. And I know that there are people that really have. Um, so I really want to reach out to them and just love on them a bit. Yeah. Is there anyone that you feel like does that for you in a special way? Anyone in your life that just seems to always be there? Oh, yes. I call her my sweetie. It's my aunt, um, BB. She lives in Memphis and she will text me. She will call me. Uh, we talk very, very often and she's always pouring into me and I love her so much. So Bernard, thank you so much for talking to me tonight. It was really great to reconnect and to see you and feel all the positive energy coming off of you. Before we go, I was wondering what song you would like to request and who you'd like to dedicate it to. I would like to request I'll Be Home for Christmas, and I would really like to dedicate it to anyone that feels alone, anyone that feels lonely, anyone that feels like they don't really have a home for the holidays. Mm, that's really nice. Bernard, here is I'll Be Home for Christmas, um, sung by Caitlin Lynch and her husband, Jonathan Lash. Oh, and it's her hubby. Yeah, we have Caitlin and Johnny coming to you from somewhere near Detroit, I believe. Yeah. Okay, here we go.
<laughs> I love them. I love Jonathan and Caitlin. I, I just can't get over how talented all of you are. It's just, oh my God, I'm, I'm getting choked up. It's just like seeing your faces and hearing your music. Um, it's just too much. It's like everyone is so full of talent and generosity and and just art. <laughs> it's just it's amazing. So thank you for doing this. I like it really means a lot to me to get to to hear you and and see you. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, I am so full. I am so full and um this was needed. Wonderful. Well, Bernard, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to the BAM household. <laughs> yeah, and I, I hope you enjoy all the variations of connecting you get to do with your friends and family. Um, and I hope that all the amazing energy that you're putting out just comes back to you tenfold. Thank you. Thank you. It always does. Merry Christmas, everybody. All right. Bye, Bernard. I love you. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me for tonight's episode and a very special thank you to Bernard Holcomb, Caitlin Lynch, and Jonathan Lash. Bernard, thank you for your stories about the Christmas lights. Happy holidays to you. And remember, it's after five somewhere. Long day after five.